disappointed in your government when every day there's a new scandal. Those are the words of the Prime Minister in 2013. But after eight years of his own leadership, we have a Canada that feels broken, according to most Canadians. They've broken family budgets, they've broken the bail system, and again, they've broken the law. This time, it's the Prime Minister's parliamentary secretary. This is the sixth consecutive ethics breach from these Liberals. No accountability for any of these cases. Why does nobody over there get fired? Thank you very much, Mr. Sec uh, Mr. Speaker. The parliamentary secretary uh, has apologized. The parliamentary secretary uh, wrote a, uh, a note in support of a business in his constituency, a business that uh, supports uh, black and multi-ethnic communities across Canada. Uh, and while it is admirable that all of us want to support local enterprise and business in our constituencies, the parliamentary secretary recognizes that it was inappropriate for him to write a letter supporting that agency and to support that business in his writing and has apologized, Mr. Speaker. Member for Thornhill. Zero accountability, zero consequences and a zero on ethics. We hope that the Prime Minister's upcoming trip to the Caribbean today is uh, is better or more productive than the last one, which resulted in his own law breaking. And that, of course, wasn't the only time he stepped in on SNC-Lavalin. And the only person who was fired in that case was the first female Indigenous Attorney General. The Trade Minister refuses to pay back taxpayers for giving tens of thousands of dollars to her best friend in an illegal contract. Will anyone over there who broke the law get fired. The Honourable Government House Leader. Mr. Speaker, I think it's, it's important every single day uh, that we show up and that we do our utmost to serve Canadians. And the reality is this government has done that in all of its actions. Uh, the reality, as I've said on many occasions, is that there are almost 2 million Canadians today who have jobs who did not have jobs when they were in government. That there is 2.7 million less people in poverty today than when they were in office. Mr. Speaker, I know they're focused on us. I know they're focused on politics. We are focused focused on delivering results for Canadians and improving their lives. The Honourable Member for Thornhill. We're focused on the Liberals who broke the law. There's one set of rules for these Liberals and another set of rules for everyone else. And don't take it from me, this is what the outgoing Ethics Commissioner said yesterday. Over the last five years and on several occasions, I've observed senior officials being unaware of their obligations and mistakenly making assumptions. For insiders, it's cushy contracts, special access, and special treatment to get ahead. And while Canadians get record inflation, record home prices, and record despair. So I'll ask for the third time. Is anyone over there going to take responsibility for breaking the law? The Honourable Government House Leader. Mr. Speaker, let, let's be clear, hyperbole aside, uh, that the reality is uh, that this, this side of the House is focused on helping shepherd the country through some of the most difficult times it's faced since World War II. And yes, while it's true, it's not enough that we have a lower inflation rate than Europe uh, the, uh, or the G7 average or the G20 average, the US, the UK or elsewhere, uh, that leading in, in difficult times is not enough. That's why we have concrete measures to actually help on issues like housing, like the member represent talked about, that they actually voted against, to help on areas like child care, that they voted against, to help vulnerable peoples. Unfortunately, those are actions they didn't take when they had the opportunity. The Honourable Member for Mégantique-Lérable. Well, Mr. Speaker, after eight years of this Liberal Prime Minister, Canadians' financial situation has never been so precarious. After eight years of this Liberal government, 44% of families say that they wouldn't be able to handle an unexpected $500 expense. After eight years of Liberal promises, nearly half of people between 35 and 44 are having trouble meeting their financial needs. Will this Prime Minister finally get that it is he, him and his inflationary policies that are responsible for this crisis? When will he stop harming Canadians? The Honourable Minister of Sports. Well, Mr. Speaker, since this government has been here since 2015, we have lifted 2.7 million people out of poverty with measures that support the most vulnerable. We know that times are difficult right now, and that is why we are offering support to help families bring their children to the dentist in order to make child care cheaper throughout the country. We will be there to support Canadians. Each time the Conservatives vote against that, the Honourable Member, Mr. Speaker, will this Prime Minister finally 
understand after eight years of not answering questions in this house that he won't help be able to help Canadians by blaming conservatives. Inflation is breaking records. Food costs so much that Canadians are skipping meals. Middle class workers are having to go to food banks because they don't have enough money to pay their bills anymore. And that's without even mentioning the cost of gas, mortgages, or rent. Will this government finally <coughs> take responsibility instead of spending all his time blaming other people? The Honorable Minister of Tourism, Mr. Speaker, over and over in this house, the Conservative opposition had a chance to vote for Canadians. When we lowered taxes on the middle class, what did the Conservatives do three times? They voted against. What did they do when we gave people a 500 housing supplement? They voted against. What did they do when we offered more money to Canadian workers from coast to coast? They voted against. We are taking action to support Canadians, and the Conservatives voted against that. The Honourable Member for Belleuil Chambly. Mr. Speaker, the provinces, territories in Quebec asked for $28 billion a year in the healthcare system, but they only got $4.6 billion. I understand that they didn't have any option. It was a take it or leave it offer. But in order to build a proper healthcare system, in order to reduce wait times in our ERs, in order to reduce surgery wait times, in order to help people fa facing mental health issues, the provinces wanted $28 billion. Is $4.6 billion really enough? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Health. I'd like to thank my colleague for the question. Our plan lays out three key commitments for premiers in order to receive funding and there is also the existing health care transfer increase. One of these requirements is to ensure that health care information is shared. We are as also asking for commitments within tailored bilateral agreements. Norfolk. After eight years of this Prime Minister, Canadians have never struggled more with paying for groceries, paying for rent, and paying to put gas in their cars. Everything is more expensive, and this government still plans to increase their ideological carbon tax. This tax has done nothing to reduce emissions and has made everything more expensive. When will the Liberals abandon their cruel carbon tax and let Conservative fix what they broke? Here, here. The Honourable Minister of the Environment. Mr. Speaker, for most of us in, in this House and most Canadians, there's the reality of climate change and, and, and where facts do matter. I know not for everyone. Oh, shit. But the facts are, Mr. Oh, Speaker, shit. greenhouse gas emissions are down 9% below 2005 level. That's a fact. Methane emissions in the oil and gas sector are, do are down almost 40% two years before schedule. That's another fact, Mr. Speaker. EV sales in Canada have doubled in the last few years. That's another fact, Mr. Speaker. And I would like, they, they won't take it from me, they won't take it from environmentalists, maybe they'll take it from the oil sands pathway. With positive industry and government collaboration. Member for Haldivan and Norfolk. Mr. Speaker, taxing Canadians to death is not going to fix the climate. Right. Statistics Canada is reporting that a quarter of Canadians would not be able to afford a sudden expense of $500. Yet, this government still plans to triple the carbon tax on April 1st. If this government would only cancel their plans to increase the carbon tax this year, Canadians would be able to afford to pay their bills once again. When will this Prime Minister take responsibility for overtaxing Canadians into poverty and let con Conservatives fix what they broke? Yeah. The Honourable Minister.